These are nine incredible new features from Microsoft 365 Copilot that will boost your productivity. From extended meeting recap features in Teams to a new interface in Outlook, as well as new features for PowerPoint and Word, you don't want to miss out on these updates, so let's nerd out. This video requires a 365 Copilot add-on license. If you aren't sure how to get that, then I will include a link in the description of this video. Number one is the extension of the AI meeting recap to chat meetings or ad hoc channel meetings. So what that means is meetings that are not planned or scheduled in advance. So if you are in a chat with a coworker and you use this meet now function, then you can now use that AI meeting recap for those quick conversations. This also extends to channel ad hoc meetings. So from a channel, if we use this meet now function, I always recommend giving these meetings a name. It just helps ensure that you can locate them easier later. So once that's updated, then we can go join now. Once you're in your meeting and have added participants, then the next piece is very important. We want to go up to the more dot 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 and then go record and transcribe. At a minimum, you'll want to ensure that you are on transcription, but I typically like to record my meetings. We can select a language and then now our meeting is being transcribed and recorded. Post meeting, we can locate the meeting details within the post tab in the channel, locate the post and go see details. From here, we want to go view recap. As an alternative, you can locate your meeting recordings in the files tab, go recordings, and then here we will see that one recording and you'll notice that it's called event plan brief. This is why I recommend renaming those ad hoc meetings ahead of time so that it just makes it easier to locate those meeting files. From here, we can select the file. This will open up the file within Stream, which is Microsoft's application for videos. And what we're looking for here is Teams. So if we select the drop down, then we can go recap and that will take us to the recap. This AI meeting recap has been available for scheduled or planned meetings for some time now. And I'm really pleased to see that it has been extended to these impromptu meetings because sometimes there's a lot of important details that are mentioned there. Number two is an improved email writing interface within Outlook. So previously, Copilot was only able to help us with this entire email. But what if we wanted to only get feedback or rewrite a specific section? So if we select just this text, then we will see a Copilot icon appear. And if we select that, then a new interface will appear. We could use a simple auto rewrite feature where Copilot will just reword it to make it flow differently. We can get coaching, which provides feedback on tone, reader sentiment, as well as clarity. You can adjust it for length or even tone. And if you wanted to, you could even make this a poem. So we can see that this new interface allows us to quickly edit and update precise sections of an email with Copilot. Once that's done, you can either replace it, insert it below, or simply discard. So if we replace, then it will be added in just like that. Number three is an improvement to the narrative builder within PowerPoint, allowing us to also reference encrypted files. Now, before we go and use the narrative builder, there's one very important thing that I recommend doing beforehand. We go up to the design tab, and then select your theme. So I'm just going to pick this one. Now, if your organization uses Templify, then you can select a template before you use the Narrative Builder as well. There are some different variants here for different color schemes. That's okay, we can select those later, but the important piece is selecting your theme or your template. Now that we've selected our theme, if we select this little co-pilot icon on the top, and then go create presentation. This brings up the narrative builder where you can customize the presentation before it's actually created. So in our case, we want to create a presentation about Amy's animal shop. So if we go reference a file, then this will bring up 
all of your recent documents that you've worked on. In our example, I'm going to locate this about as at Amy's Animal Shop, but the improvement here is that we are now able to reference not only Word or PDF files, but also files that have been encrypted. So with that in there, we can now generate. So this is going to review our file, and now it's going to create a presentation based on these documents. So we can see that Copilot has now drafted a presentation outline for us. You can delete these sections. If you wanted to, you could even reorder them, or you can even add additional sections and reference more files. Once you have your template ready, then we can go and generate slides. So we can see an outline of our presentation being created and Copilot is gonna be filling in pictures. It's gonna be adding text to all of these slides and literally saving you so much time creating presentations. And here we go. This is our presentation. So if you like it, then you can keep it. And if not, then you can always discard it, but let's go and keep it. Now, the reason why I suggest selecting a theme or a template ahead of time is if we go up to this design tab again, and then this time we will change the theme. So what this does is now the text is not really going to be aligned appropriately on the slide. This one isn't too bad, but if we go down to this slide, for example, you'll see that the title and now the body of the text has moved based on that new theme. So I always recommend selecting your theme or your template first, and then you can create your presentation with the narrative builder. And if we go back to that design tab, for example, if we wanted to change the variant, then we can update that easily and we will see that that text has maintained its current position. Number four is an improvement. A quick pause in today's video to say that my ebook, Navigating Microsoft Passages, is available for free for you to download. Inside, you will find a treasure map to help you navigate Microsoft 365 apps with confidence so that you can increase your productivity and efficiency and reclaim your time for meaningful work. I will include a link at the end of this tutorial as well as in the description of this one. So be sure to check it out and grab your copy today. To the summarize feature within PowerPoint. So if we go up to the home ribbon, go all the way over to Copilot on the far right. Then the prompt that we are looking for is this one, extract key information or summarize this presentation. So if we use that one, then previously it was only able to summarize presentations that had 15,000 words, but now it can summarize presentations up to 40,000 words, which is approximately 150 slides. So if you have a big presentation, then this improvement will be very helpful for you. As a summarize feature we can see here, gives us insights into what a presentation is about. Tip number five is available within PowerPoint and in Microsoft Word, where Copilot Chat can now extract information from images. So here we have a pie chart summarizing the winter apparel product sales at Amy's Animal Shop. And if we want to add this image to the Copilot chat, then we can go upload from this device. And here we can select our image. So if we go open, we can provide a prompt to analyze this image. Now Copilot is going to analyze it and extract the details so that we can now create a slide based on this information. Another cool thing about this feature is that you could even get it to extract text and then, for example, translate it. So you might use this feature if you wanted to take a screenshot of something on your computer screen. You could save that image and then import it into Copilot and gather insights or extract text from the image. Moving along to Microsoft Word, if we expand this Copilot chat, then this next tip is the read aloud feature. It is also available within PowerPoint and it's rolling out to desktop apps, but at the time of recording, it's only working for me on the web. Now, if we ask Copilot a question, in our case, I'm going to ask it for some general input on what people look for when they buy dog apparel products. And we are seeing that Copilot is generating a response. Now, once this response is generated, then I could read through all of it, 
but it's a lot of text. My eyes have already been staring at the computer for a long time. So what I recommend doing is using this read aloud feature. Adjustable straps and easy to use buckles are often sought. So we can see how this can make the conversation with Copilot more engaging. It can give your eyes a bit of a break from the computer, or it also allows you to read content within your Word or PowerPoint presentation while listening to Copilot on the side. Tip number seven is how TXT file formats are now supported in Microsoft Word. You might be wondering why I have Excel open, and typically a TXT file is exported from a software into a plain text format, or you can export or save as one sheet in your Excel file as a TXT file, and then we will import it into Word. So here we are in Word, and if we go write an article based on, then a forward slash is going to appear here, and we can now search our recent files. Now, if you backspace out of here, then as a little tip, if you select the attach icon here, then you could start to search for your files in this search area. My file is not a recent file, so in order to upload that, we can actually use this browse from cloud. This will bring up all of your files, and now I can navigate to operations, general, and here is that txt file. So if we attach, then now we can generate a report. So we can see that Copilot is looking through that key text data, and this would have actually been a helpful starting point for me to do my analysis of my Excel file, as we can see that Copilot is generating some great insights and some key points from that document. Tip number eight is how we can save our favorite prompts so that we can quickly complete recurring tasks in the future. Or we can share these prompts with coworkers so that they can have a similar experience. So here I am in the Copilot chat app, and I'm going to paste my prompt in this description box below. Now Copilot is going to respond to this and we are just going to ignore that for now. So at Amy's Animal Shop, we have a weekly newsletter and I want to every week provide Copilot with the contents of that newsletter and ask Copilot to draft an introduction. So that's what this prompt is for. I'm saying draft an introduction for the weekly newsletter. And then I set what the expectation is as well as the length. And the last sentence here is that the body of the newsletter is in this file. So this is my shell prompt. And as a little tip, I actually didn't create this on my own. Copilot and I created it together. And if you do want to learn seven proven AI prompting hacks, then I will include a link at the end of this video for you to check out. So once we have our shell prompt here, then we can go save prompt. Here, you will give it a name. So we will call this newsletter, and then you can edit the prompt here as you need, but I'm quite happy with mine. And now we can save this prompt. And then now in the future to get that prompt, I can go view prompts here, your prompts, and then we will see your saved prompts. So by accessing that here, then now we can easily just reference that file and streamline that creation process. If you want to remove those prompts, then you can go view prompts, your prompts, and then simply just remove it by selecting this bookmark icon. Now, as an alternative, we can also copy the prompt link and then we will generate a link that we can share with others. Now, just note here that if your prompt has a file in it, then that file will only be accessible to people that have permissions to view that file. So that is Microsoft thinking about the security of your information. If your prompt is just a generic prompt, then anybody in your organization that has access to that link can access that prompt. Tip number nine is a brand new app for the prompt gallery. So I'm in Microsoft Teams here, and if we select the ellipses, then you can search for prompts. It's this one right here, or you can start to type it out. And then, this is literally brand new. I didn't have access to it yesterday, so it will start to roll out to everyone soon. But this one is going to be a little bit more robust than the prompt gallery that we just looked at. So you have Microsoft prompts, your prompts. So we can see that newsletter introduction here, 
or even your team prompts. And the great thing about this prompt gallery is that if we hover over a prompt and go share, then we now have an option to share this prompt with our team, expanding that horizon from just sharing one link with one other team member. To view my seven proven AI prompting hacks, then you can check out this video here.